and welcome back to Bros in a Landfill, the only podcast you'll find snooping around your desk when you least expect it. My name's Tribian, and this week I've got a special guest, Temzik, Hello. who, uh, if you don't know, if you don't know classic bro lore, which I'm sure none of you do, uh, Temzik and I used to stream Nancy Drew games a few years back. Uh, we went by on the TNT Master Detectives on which service did we stream on? Oh God, don't ask me. Uh, either way, the gimmick was we played um the Nancy Drew games on Master Difficulty. Uh, I don't think mostly any. I don't think really anybody watched, but who cares? It was fun. Yeah. So speaking of Nancy Drew, uh, do you want to introduce yourself, um, Temzik? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I'm I'm a big fan of the old school Nancy Drew point click adventure games and just well point click adventure games in general. So I think in a lot of the discussion that I'm probably gonna have with you about uh, old school Nancy Drew games, I'm probably also going to mention uh, some older point and click adventure games, probably referencing stuff from like the '90s, Moon Logic, Ooh. that kind of thing. I uh, yeah, I mainly got to um. Point and click adventures through Nancy Drew because um my my mom was into the Nancy Drew games um and I I would watch her play it then eventually I started playing it either way um Nancy Drew it, it's a game series was first which was based off a book series that I'm sure most of us have heard of if yeah. you're not from America and you might not know Nancy Drew but easy Google a uh, cool teen girl detective goes around solves wacky mysteries yeah. Uh, started in the 30s. Whoa. That's now I that's that's like we're almost a century of Nancy Drew. We got like a decade left. Yeah, basically. Well, because I mean, the um, that was the whole point of uh, Nancy Drew secret of the old clock. Mm hmm. Was was that it was a Nancy Drew game set in the time period when the original books were written. Which is also sort of weird because the games are sort of modernized. Oh yes, and it's, absolutely. And there, and there's a certain and there's a certain level of um con- continuity between the games. Yeah. Oh well, and the I mean, I I always saw Secret of the Old Clock as very much its own thing. Yeah. No. It's especially well, they did a bit more. Especially because yeah, they did. A li- yeah. Yeah, they did some more experimental stuff too. They're like with like a car driving around and stuff. Yeah. Like. And the Secret of the Old Clock was the first Nancy Drew game, yeah. or first Nancy Drew book. But uh, we're not here to talk about old Nancy Drew. I mean, we might, we'll probably bring it up either way. Oh, definitely. Because um, the yeah, but the main reason why we're here is um, last month in this, I mean, it'll be two months ago by the time I think this goes up. I don't know. Eh, yeah. yeah, last month, December, early December, we got um, was it the thirty third entry in the Nancy Drew uh, series? I think so. I think yeah, so. Th- it's um. I... Nancy Drew, mi- mi- <laughs> Nancy Drew, Midnight in Salem, the spookiest, scariest game that sets in bo- that takes place in Salem, Massachusetts. Uh, after a few years of waiting, we um finally got the newest entry in the series. They've upgraded the they've upgraded um quotations the um engine into Unity, and uh the series has changed quite a bit. There was a bit of development hell, and I'm interested a in bit. having a conversation. A bit, yeah. Ugh. Um, uh, talking to it with um Temzik, seeing what um what we both thought of it, and just having fun from there. So I'll, I'll open things up, and I'll let Temzik talk about um his experience with the game first, as he played it before I did. So might as well move from there. Yeah. Um, I think the best way I can sum up this game in as short amount of time as possible is that. Wasted potential. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I can definitely agree on that. It had on that front. It had some really good ideas. It had some really ambitious ideas. It was really ambitious in some ways in some of the things it tried to do, but it fell flat in most of them. Uh, there were there. I mean, there were some things I was genuinely impressed with. Like uh, there were a lot more. Um, background characters oh yeah huh. I, I i feel like the game's biggest problem was that it was over ambitious and they didn't have the money to be as ambitious as they wanted to be yep because like the nancy drew series has always been like a lower budget series but they've managed with uh keeping the scope of things rather small yeah 
the games the games were never too long. It was a lot of it was a lot of you just going around figuring things out as you go, investigating. Not much in terms of a expansive script, yeah, or much or mu- there wasn't even much in terms of a narrative. It was more like there was a story going on around you, and you're kind of like an outside observer to the story. Yeah, where this one put Nancy more into the forefront, where the story was more revolved around Nancy in some ways, and Nancy was more involved with the side characters. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, I, I definitely have to give them props for trying to have a big oh, yeah. cast because there were mm-hmm. a lot of characters in this. There were a lot of yeah. named characters in this that yeah, well, you had like long conversations with. And I thought that that was, I mean, that was a ambitious move. Um, the thing, though, is that yeah, I, it, there's a couple places where it really did fall flat. As I mentioned, they tried to do a lot of background characters. Uh, mm-hmm. they, they tried to have a lot of background characters. Like, there was this whole mob of angry people in front of uh, a courthouse in, yeah, in it. Uh, and and a, a mob of angry people chanting generic platitudes over and over again. And every time you're there, it kind of gets a little bit annoying. Yeah, uh, well, I, I actually noted something else. There was this one guy in mm. the audience, just because I was I was paying attention. Um, of course. Uh, to it. There was this one guy in the audience, and then a couple minutes later, uh, I'm walking over towards, like, the cemetery, and there's another guy running around with uh, a sign. And I say, wait a second, I've seen that shirt before. And I go back to the crowd and I realize, oh my god, they recycled the character model. Ooh. Ouch. And I don't I don't fault them that much. Like it's to the same extent, like I feel like one of the strongest aspects of Nancy Drew games in the past has always been their setting design. Like everything like the games used to be dense with detail and I feel moving on to Unity, I a lot of the building models... There were some things that I think were just because uh, Nancy Drew games have been a lot of things of varying quality, but um, mm-hmm. the quality has always been consistent. Yeah. No, like, even in the older games where they had like the goofy, like almost like Microsoft Paint models... For characters, like it was always, they all looked like they belonged in the same game. Yeah, or or even the um, or even the uh early game models that I uh, uh, looked sort of like uh off like off brand Barbie dolls. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. Oh my god, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Like even then, like you bought it because they were all consistent in their appearance. Yeah, like. There was like I, I feel like outside like outside of like the main like the main cast like a lot of the supporting characters like or even like the background characters that were just there just looked very low res generic stock like modeled people they don't oh like, like the, the the biggest the biggest comparison I'll give you and it's between two main characters mind you uh, mm-hmm. um yeah. Hardy Boys models looked great. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, they oh, were the Hardy, Hardy Boys are part of the, some of the best part of the game in general. Yeah, uh, I mean outside of that electro, yes, puzzle, like that that that, yeah. that puzzle is probably the worst part of the game. Yeah. Then, um, but on the other end of the spectrum, yeah. Deirdre. Yeah, Deirdre's model is not good. No. Yeah. No, I I had some other problems with um Tegan's model. I felt uh, there was there was something off about Tegan's face, like when she was, especially when she was talking. Yeah. Like, like I feel like the Hardy Boys got some love, but they also had similar designs. I feel like that's why a lot of the male characters look better because in general their designs are a lot simpler. With with the female characters, I feel a lot of them are over designed, and it kind of shows. Yeah. Yeah. There, I mean, again, there were some really, there were some really good parts of it uh, that I really did enjoy. Uh, even if just conceptually speaking, Salem, Massachusetts, oh, yeah. and like dealing with the witch trials, I thought was awesome, well, awesome well, I think setting. 
well, and, and I think the general conceit of this, um, the, the, of you have like the Hawthorne house and these different, like, like, like this questioning of who the house should belong to. And there's like, there's like a legitimate moral question that they ask you at the end of the game, what you think the moral answer should be. And it kind of falls flat because like, I don't want to, I'm not going to go into spoilers, but like there's a, there's a branching choice at the very end of the game. And it feels very weird because A, Nan- like only one of the choices feels like something that Nancy would actually say. B, Nancy Drew games have never had multiple choices. Uh, there there have been a couple of there have been a couple of multiple ending ones. In fact, uh, uh, what was it? Um, oh God, I'm, I'm I'm blanking on the name of it. It was uh, it was the the one with the the Southern Manor. Uh, I'm 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 not. Re- there's so many Nancy Drew games yeah. over like, over yeah yeah, um, but the one that was like not, on the southern plantation. Are, are you talking about Shadow Ranch? No, not Shadow Ranch. It was like a southern plantation. It was. Uh, I've got the fucking list of games up on my. It was one of the more recent ones. Yeah, well, I feel like the more recent ones was it. It wasn't the Shattered Medallion. It wasn't no. Because when you, when you, when you say when you say recent ones. It was, like, uh, I mean, it was like in the last five. Uh, well, the last, I mean, in the last five, the only two there is um, Sea of Darkness and Sea of, I mean, it's Sea of, sea of Darkness is the, are you talking about last five games or last five years? Uh, last five games. Okay, last five games. Was it, was it um, Ghosts of Thornton Hall? Yes, that one. Okay. Yeah, I don't that one, that, that one had a couple different endings. Yeah. Hmm. Depending on how you handled the, depending on how you handled like the last few puzzles and last few dialogue trees, that yeah, one see, had. I think that one had some I, different endings. Yeah, but I don't. I, it's, I don't mind um, multiple endings. It's not something that Nancy Drew does all the time, but it's it's mainly like you're given this choice that only Nancy would pick one of the answers, right. and it feels it feels really it feels really odd to. Should try even think about picking one of the other ones. Yeah. But that's that's the other thing. It's like I feel like it's a really like another set of this ambitiousness. It's like they wanted to have the player give this choice of who they wanted of like like in this moral question, like ask this moral question to the player. But it really falls flat because since the game doesn't branch off at any point, all that like yeah. all that really matters is just, oh, what does the player think, right? Not what Nancy would actually do, because Nancy's actually a fleshed out character with like almost yeah. a century of history. Yeah, I think for me the the thing that uh uh stuck at me the most is that they try to push it as this significant moral question mm-hmm. when the the morality of it is actually fairly black and white cuz it's um cuz sort of the uh, imagery and messaging they're trying to play around with is that of the witch trials people being yeah. accused hastily and uh not being given a proper defense and uh uh you know it, it's sort of trying to draw that allegory and it's also clearly portrayed that that mindset is in the wrong yeah throughout the whole game that when you get to this choice like you know, why why would you pick anything else? Because you've had the sort of the morality of the of the game crammed down your throat the whole time, which is not to say it's a bad thing. Because it is a it is a good moral. It is a good lesson. Yeah. Don't judge people uh, based on their past. Don't judge people based on your preconceived notions. That's a great lesson. Yeah. Oh yeah. But. It really falls flat when it gives you, like, the choice to pick things other than what the game's been teaching you and for the game to not really punish you for it. Like, I think it would have been one thing if you chose the bad, if you chose, like, the um, other options in the game, like, gave you bad endings for that. But it doesn't matter which one you choose. Everybody's happy at the end. Like, everybody's... Some people might be disappointed, but there's no real... You don't have this any sense of, oh, I did the bad thing. Or, But in addition... um. It it could have it could have uh you could have actually done something really interesting and played around with that morality question by having it be a little less black and white. Oh yeah. By by, by having a situation where, yeah, even though you probably shouldn't be judging people based on on their past and on the things they've done, um, 
when, when someone does some, you know, it's that sometimes it is helpful to listen to your gut about these kinds of things because sometimes that that's all that will save you. Yeah. And and I think that kind of go, go, goes back to the failure of the actual mystery at hand where like at the very, like Nancy Drew's never been a ga- game series that's always had like the best villains or the best like twists. Like the game is much more, I've always found the series much more about the, the actual snooping and investigation and uncovering these secrets and learning about these places. Oh, and, oh, and the puzzles. and Yeah. Which funnily enough, this game fails mostly. Oh, like, most... it, had, like, it had like no puzzles. Like, and the puzzle, oh, all the puzzles of those that you were streamlined right into the story. They were, some of them were decent, but most of them were bad. Yep. And then. And then there was virtually no snooping. You only got to snoop in areas when the game told, basically told you you could snoop. Yep. Or what, when the game wanted you to snoop, you could snoop. But otherwise, there was no... Like, it's like, oh, this part... Like, there was actually only, I think, one time in the game where you legitimately got to, like, break into someone's place and, like, look... Like, well, sneak into some, someone's, like, office and, like, look around in it. Other than that, it was all... Like, actually, here's a great example... Throughout the entire, like at the beginning of the game, like when you get into like when you go into the house with like Tegan and May, and it's like, oh, I shouldn't go into May's like May's room. You never until... go into May's room. Yeah, yeah. The game sets up at the like very like from the very beginning that you're like, oh, looks like I might be able to go in May's room and investigate, and I check there every single time. But no, it's it never wants you to actually go in there. Um, it's the same thing with the Hawthorne house. It's like you you finally get into the Hawthorne house, like like mid into the game, and it's like, oh. I can investigate. I'm going to, I can finally investigate this place. And then it's just this small cramped area that you're there for a few seconds. Like you find one thing and then you're like, well, you find two things and it's like, well, uh, uh, I'm done here. Yeah. And also speaking as someone who cares about audio, there was just this one audio clip of one of the protesters outside the courthouse. And she had this just one audio line and the mic quality was dreadful. Yeah, oh. and just so out of line with everything else. I wonder. I, I wonder how much, like, how much of those like background stuff they they outsource because I like looking at the credits. There was a huge amount of like bouncing between different teams and outsourcing, and I, it was bizarre seeing how many people actually worked on this game, considering how long it was and how unimpressive a lot of the assets were. Yeah, I mean, on the one hand, there were some elements of it that were genuinely impressive. Oh yeah. Like, there were elements of Salem Town that I thought were really neat. Like, that town square was actually pretty impressive. Yeah, which kind of made me wish there was a bit more to it. Like, as much as I liked the town square, it felt very... under. It was underutilized. Yeah, like, there was nothing to really interact with there. Like, there was... Like you spent most of your time in, like, uninteresting places rather than exploring the most interesting places. Like, even... Like, even the the fucking museum it's like you go in there and you spend very little time in the game and then you go up to like you you, you go to a secret part of the museum and you there's barely anything there for you to actually like do oh you want an example of something that i i think um uh is a major d- uh difference between this game and the way that nancy drew games would often be done previously mm-hmm. um in the museum there is a sign that has, like, all the names of all the people who were previously accused of being witches, when they were accused, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. That was never once used for, like, a puzzle or anything. Oh, yeah, yeah the, only, the only thing any of that stuff was used for was, like, oh, this, um, you're going around. It's, it was the edutainment part of the game. Where yeah. like they were just having, you know, which which really weird because Nancy Nancy Drew tends to actually do the edu- education parts of their games very well. Yeah, they but they tend just to be pretty well researched too. Yeah, but they usually integrate those educational parts into the story, and like you actually have to read them in order to solve a puzzle. Yeah, but like in this game, it just kind of like gives you like a tour of like, oh, this is Salem. This is like witch trial stuff. And then it doesn't matter for the rest of the game other than just, oh, we have history. Yeah. Like that was like probably like the most bizarre feeling because Laura, like part of the biggest charm of the Nancy Drew games is how much you learn. And it puts you in this investigator's mindset of like thinking and learning and trying to figure out the past of these areas and how the 
the puzzles and secrets were late. Yeah. Oh, like, we never really learn anything. Of, like, the thing about the prohibition. Mm -hmm. We never really learn anything about that. I, I completely forgot that was a thing. Yeah, like, they, they mention it every once in a while, and I was thinking, oh, maybe that'll end up being, that'll end up, like, tying back into something that's, like, that, that, that's a part of the plot, and, like, part of the villain's plan ends up tying back to that, and that's gonna be the twist, but, yeah. no, they don't really do anything with it. Well, and... I, I wonder how many drafts, like, like how many rewrites the script's gone through because there's so many different, like, ideas presented and whatnot. And yeah. I get the feeling whoever wrote the, like, whoever wrote the first draft had a cl clear idea of what they wanted. And then later through rewrites, it's like, it's the same thing, I think, with the with the big bad. It's like, I think there was an idea behind the the villain of the game and, like, how the, and the relationship back to all the story. But at the end, it just feels like, oh, like, bad person. Yeah. It's like it's like bad crazy person who doesn't think rationally. Yeah. Uh so here's the thing I'm going to say because I I mentioned it earlier when we were discussing it, but um the biggest comparison I can make with this game to a far better Nancy Drew game that evoked some of the same uh some of the same tone, some of the same ideas was uh The Ghost of Thornton Hall. Yeah, going back to that one, eh? Because, okay, let's just, like, look at some of the similarities. Um, first off, the reason that the ghost would appear and the reason that the ghost, mm -hmm. you, you see a ghost, is, like, almost exactly the same reason mm -hmm. that it happened in Midnight in Salem. You're You're hallucinating. Yeah. Spoilers. Eh. Yeah. Oh well. It's, it's, if you're if you're in this part, we're not saying you should play. Like, I, I'm I'm in this crossroads where I don't want people to play Midnight and Save. I don't I, I don't want people to waste their money, but I also don't want the series to die. I kind of want like the series to be able to have a revitalization. The way but I, I don't know. the way I see it is. I would not recommend Midnight in Salem to anyone who has not already played Nancy Drew games and doesn't yeah. already like them. Because yeah. if I were going to recommend a Nancy Drew game to someone, I'd recommend them one of the better ones, like oh yeah, um, uh, Ghost of Thornton Hall or uh, what's the one, um, uh, Blackmoor Manor. Yeah, that's what that's what I was thinking. Or of. Shadow like, Ranch. Like even like some of the um older like ones are like I I some of my favorite ones are um, uh fucking like the Haunted Carousel. Uh, I love um the fucking wolf of ice creek mm. uh i thought ghost dogs and moon lake holds up pretty well oh yeah oh yeah that one was really good i remember that one yeah um, I, I, some of the older nancy drew games hold up really really oh, yeah. well well even the one even like the really old ones that we played together like um like uh final was, curtain was it, i think yeah, final like um yeah final curtain was great it was the final um was it the final scene Final Something scene was like the final scene. I quite I, I remember quite l liking Treasure in the Royal Tower. Mm. Then, uh, yeah, and then you have then you even have some of the ones that were in like the twenties of the games, like ah, uh, yeah. uh, some of those were pretty good. Yeah. Hey, even the last one before me, didn't say I'm seeing of Darkness was surprisingly good compared to some of the other n newer ones. Yeah. So. In general, I, I, I'm, if I were to suggest any of the Nancy Drew games, I would not recommend Midnight in Salem. Yeah, no. Midnight in Salem is if you're curious and you've played the other games. Yeah. And get it on sale, too. Don't... Oh, yeah. Yeah, don't 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 put the 21... I mean, all of the Nancy Drew games are on Steam. There's no excuse. And they're all relatively cheap. Like, especially the older, better ones tend to be the cheaper ones, too. Yeah. I should like, pick up some of the older ones on Steam. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they have like big, like they have like big bundles of Nancy Drew games yeah. where you can. Well, I have, I have some of those bundles that are like the physical copies, but they're not very yeah, no. stable. 
Yeah, no, they they have they have all the digital like all the digital games within bundles on Steam. Yeah, that's the thing. Like the only, I think the only ones they don't have is um the original Secrets Can Kill, hmm. uh, which is a shame because the remaster is nowhere near as good as the like is like nowhere as interesting as the original. Yeah, the can't um, have can't can't have Nancy shooting guns. Yeah, the um. So on that note, though, uh, I, I think the thing I want to next mention is uh, sort of the subgenre that the Nancy Drew games are a part of and how how this particular game stacks up to mm-hmm. other point-and-click adventure games. Yeah. No, I can... I've actually... I've, actually, I've got, like, a couple examples to think of as well. Um that may not be exactly like point and click adventures, but fall within the purview. Um, but I'll I'll let you go first. Uh, so I say probably once a year. I I think, um, someone releases a uh, what I consider to be a classic style point and click adventure game. Uh, if if you're familiar with what I mean when I say classic, like oh, uh, yeah, I... Luca- like Lucas Arts. Yeah, no, I, I know what you're talking. Yeah. So I'd say once a year someone releases one. I think this year it was Whispers of a Machine, which was pretty good. Um, then I think the year before that it was The Unavowed, which I really liked. Uh, I think yeah, the there's movie... so many there's just, there's so the many point and click adventures I need to play for that. But um, so like that's the thing is those are all very graphically simple games. They they don't have 3D graphics. They do classic yeah. 2D pixel graphics. And while obviously Nancy Drew is a different kind of game, and yes, it, it definitely does rely on its 3D graphics, um, mm-hmm. uh, these other point-and-click adventure games are just far more interesting, just because they're they just are have far more compelling puzzles and far more compelling stories. Uh, I specifically point to um. Uh, Whispers of a Machine, Unavowed, and Thimbleweed Park, because uh, I'd say between those three games, you run the gambit of uh, detective game, uh, supernatural elements, and more detective game. Yeah, like, one of the cool things about um, Point and Click Adventures is is they're never really about... I mean, to one extent, I don't... I think the graphic... Like, it's never about having high graphical quality. It's more about the style. That you're yeah. and making a style that fits the atmosphere of the story you want to tell, like I like a few years ago, the a point and click adventure game called Dropsy came out, and it's by no means a pretty looking game, but that's sort of the point. It's supposed to be this gross, bizarre, weird um, yeah. experience, and I th- and I think it works because of that. Yeah. To the to the other extent, if we want to talk about like a sort of point and click experience. Where you're, you do have 3D environments. I think something where where Nancy Drew really fails is how empty it is. And uh, the best example I can use, at least, yeah, yeah, Midnight Sale, specifically Midnight Sale, because I mean, especially old Nancy Drew games were incredibly dense with details. But current, like last year, I was talking with Temzik about um a bit about I the Solomon Files. I the Solomon Files isn't completely a point and click adventure, but it has like these point and click investigation segments. In a similarly like 3D environment where you can zoom up to things, you can turn your camera, look around. But every environment is dense with so much stuff to look at and to examine. And everything, every conceivable thing that you could examine has dialogue and it's a conversation or a witty, funny thing that goes along with it. Where with like with Nancy Drew, and I think this I think this goes with like point and click adventures in general what makes the games fun is that you can almost like there's so much to interact with and you're trying to just figure out what you're supposed to look at piece together whatnot with midnight in salem because it's such an empty experience with so little to actually investigate look at pick up examine it feels like you're less actually playing a point and click adventure and more you're just kind of like an an on rails experience doing what the game wants you to do next yeah because I mean, there are a few puzzles, but they're very few and far between. And they and they only happen when the game wants you to solve the puzzles. Right. Right. They are very like yeah, exactly. the The puzzles only come up at story beats. Yeah. 
It's not like you hit a puzzle and you have a little trouble with it, so you say, oh, I can come back to that later. I have, like, five other things that I that I could be handling right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And really, most of the puzzles are in the back half as well. Like, like the only, like, real puzzles that are the early on is a spectrum graph puzzle, which I would hardly call a puzzle because it gives you very little explanation. And if you don't... Oh, my God. Really that, that oh, it's not a puzzle. Me. It was just straight up trial and error because, like, it tells you, oh, well, you got to line up the lines, but it doesn't give you any indication of what the dials and buttons actually do. So you're just sitting there trying to piece it together. Yep. But that uh, was so, a nightmare. Uh, so, on, on terms of the story, though, there were. Uh, hang on, hang on. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Yeah. So I'm just like looking at like some of these like old Nancy Drew games on Steam. And I can't help but just be like how much better they actually look compared to the Midnight and Sailor, like the character models, mm. the environment, the environment. Like I was looking at the Scarlet Hand and OK, yeah, there's still some like that old Nancy Drew Jenkins to the models. But like they look good, like especially for their time. I think Nancy Drew in general is one of the few game series that looked really good for its time. Yeah. And and it's really weird now. That, now that they've moved to Unity, the game looks like it's gone back like a decade. Yep. But that's not what we're talking about. We were talking about like puzzles, um, comparing to other um, point and click adventures. Yeah. So. Um. There were also the puzzles were also very easy. Yeah. Well, they they, they ranged from easy to not not well explained and you had to figure out the rules for yourself and once you figured out the rules it was easy then they were easy yeah yeah um like there is um like that there is this last puzzle where you're given like the note from the will thing yeah and like i got confused on that point like that was like the only like one of the only puzzles i had like real difficulty with but that's because you're Nancy finds like this piece of paper with a message with, with a letter from what's her what you call it from like well from one of the characters to another and it and it's got instructions for this puzzle on it but at no point in the game does it make sense for the because you're playing as a Hardy Boys at the point it doesn't make sense for the Hardy Boys to even have this piece of paper so I wasn't looking at my um inventory for it so I was just using the information that the game had given me at that point for the puzzle and I was like. Yeah, um, I agree with you on the puzzles. Yeah, uh, but so I think the um, I I do again have to say though I think the story had some really good ideas. Oh yeah, no, it was a really there was like, a lot of fascinating things about the story and a lot of interesting things to think about. Like, I just it, like one thing that I think was really good, and I would have liked more if her character model wasn't just the worst. <laughs> Deirdre, the but, fact what, that what? the fact that Deirdre was like your sidekick for this, and like Deirdre and Nancy having to work together to to solve the mystery, I thought was like that's brilliant. That's that is a that is a new idea that I've never seen done before in a Nancy Drew yeah. game. I was actually kind of disappointed that there was no point where you could play as Deirdre. Like, there's a point where you play as Hardy Boys, but at, there's a point in the game where they all separate, and I fully expected to take control of Deirdre at some point, because they're like, oh, where's Deirdre? And then it just... Oh, Deirdre's here. Like, yeah. Like, I missed... But that was Exactly, that was the thing, is Deirdre was around, but they never used her. She most of the time she just bitched and moaned or was very just soon towards like she was being sundary towards Nancy. <laughs> it's like I don't. Oh, it's like I don't like you, even though you're really cool and you're helping me with and my and friends with their and, problems. And you're helping me with this like serious issue. That's gonna but I don't like you or anything. Baka, Baka Daya. The um no no um Hardy Boys. That was something that I think uh. With the with uh the spectrogram puzzle notwithstanding, uh, I yeah. think the Hardy Boys were probably the most consistently good part of the game. Yeah, but I think I think them coming in a bit later also helped. Like they're the ones that came there to help. So their their goal on their 
their purpose was very like on point. Yeah, they didn't overstay their welcome. They didn't like I could I could have seen there easily be problems if you came there and the Hardy Boys were already there. But the fact that they came there for Nancy and to help Nancy gave them, I think, enough drive to keep them from being like annoying or overstaying their welcome or whatever. Yeah, so uh, I think they were a part of the story that I think they just worked. I think they just mm-hmm. worked as part of the story. Um, I feel like they kind of retreaded, trodden ground with Ned. Yeah. Ned, speaking of Ned, Ned was surprisingly weak in this game. Where Ned, like the Ned's usually utilized pretty well and as a support call, like you, you call him, you support he um gives you hand support or whatever, or he was checking on Nancy or whatever. Like, like I, I, I get like the whole like Ned, Nancy and Fred, like well Frank um love triangle is a thing that's been trotted around before in the the game series. But I felt like in some ways it felt so ham-fisted at times. And I didn't feel feel any real chemistry between Ned and Nancy in this game, which is Weird. odd compared to the Yeah, compared like like you, there's there's supposed to have been a couple for such a for a long time. You'd think that there'd at least be some like even like even like if they wanted to hint at like even if they want to hint more towards like Nancy and Fred as well, Nancy and Frank as a thing. It's like Ned and Nancy just felt really off in this game as opposed to the previous incarnations in the series. Oh, and speaking of which, let's address the uh, the witch in the room. <laughs> uh, Nancy's new voice actress. Yeah. Because well, they've had the same voice actress for Nancy since the series began, and yeah. I'll admit it, the voice actress for Nancy doesn't really sound a lot like a young woman, like a young yeah. early twenties woman. Yeah, and, yeah, no, I mean, yeah. yeah, but I mean, Lonnie it's, Manila. This it's for me. It's less of how the voice sounds. It's all in the the delivery in this. Like Lonnie, like I, I'm not, I'm not upset that they changed out Lonnie Manila. Like I, I get it. Like they didn't have, they didn't, they probably didn't have the budget to pull her in again. Lonnie Manila is such a big voice actor. Um I I get they wanted to bring in younger talent, uh higher from the Seattle area, whatever. But I feel like the I feel like in a lot of ways the Nancy sounded far too much like a Valley girl. She and, felt so, well, she sounded far less sincere in this game as she has in the other games. And, yeah, and I mean I she kind of I mean Nancy kind of is a bit of a Valley girl. Uh yeah. in 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 some ways, oh yeah, but, but at the same time, uh, Nancy Nancy, uh, well, Nancy has always been distinctive. It's it, it, even if Lenny Manella, even if her voice isn't perfect for the character of Nancy Drew, mm-hmm. it was at least distinct, and you recognized that voice. Yeah, well, and I said that I think I think the difference with Lenny Manella as opposed to the new voice actress. Is all in the delivery because I could I could see this I could see this voice working from Nancy, but everything behind the delivery um makes so Nancy being this like smart dorky um kind of like know it all character who's seen a lot of stuff and is really in, into these solving mysteries like I I felt like this performance at times made Nancy come off as unlikable. Where there was always this charm to Lonnie Manella's N- Nancy, right, even yeah. like when Nancy was being no no know it all, and like even though she was being a know it all, being a bit snoopy or she was she pressy. was fun, yeah, she was fun and she had this personality to her voice, but mm-hmm. this new voice actress just really doesn't. She just, she kind of just, she's just kind of generic, mm-hmm. sort of just generic uh, young female voice. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think I think that's a problem. It's missing the spirit of Nancy. It's not. It doesn't. It doesn't sound like this girl who's been going on all these cases, all these mysteries, scenes, has seen a lot of shit, has been put in danger all the time. It sounds like. It it really sounds like this someone who's in over their head, who's a know it all, who's kind of annoying. Oh, and here's the other thing that's interesting and the way that they portray this that didn't didn't sit well with me the way they they were trying to sell it. 
there was this bit after the ghost shows up for the first time where Nancy's like, I've never experienced anything like this before. This feels like the real deal. And it just, it did not yeah. sell me. Yeah. You know and, what the other thing that, you know what the other thing that didn't sell me at all in this game as opposed to the previous games? Nancy moralizing so often. Like, oh yeah. Like, like, I, I get that this this is a game that they wanted to they had like a message that they wanted to say and there was like a strong moral behind it. But Nancy always seemed to have been like this voice of reason sort of as I said before, she's just always seems to be like this observer to this situation going on, never an active part of it. Like outside of a few games where she was like the story was centered around her, but like Alibi and Ashes speaking, or Yeah, yeah, Al, but yeah, Alibi and Ashes was a game about Nancy and that like that was part of the premise. This this isn't one of those games. This is Nancy's coming in to help somebody, but she's also kind of the center of like all the story this time, and it was weird. And where I think in previous Nancy Drew games where other characters would be the demoralizing and Nancy would be kind of sympathetic to like everybody. Like this time it was like Nancy was like, oh, especially in the final confrontation where like she's revealing the the killer. That was like, that was so odd. Oh, yeah. Guy, there was no killer. Like when she was re- re- revealing the bad guy, that was so odd. Like she yeah, was like they being all just, like manipul- yeah, they like, kinda, being all manipulative and like moralizing and whatnot. And oh, yeah. That's, that's the, what never, the, the way they did it in this weird like 20 minute, like 20 minute long dialogue sequence. Yeah. When usually they just leave it to like a post game wrap up sequence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which those were always pretty good. Yeah, well that's that's but that's part of like the game's always really ended on the final puzzle, like the villain surprises you, catches you in a trap, or something in that regard. You get one final puzzle and then you get out and then post game sequence of showing what happened. Yeah, like, but the post game sequence is never more than like five minutes tops. Yeah. Because like the games never overstayed their welcome, they knew that that was the conclusion. Like in a cl- like like in a classic mystery novel, it's like the ga- the story ends when you beat the villain, and and a lot of the cases of Nancy Drew beating the villain is getting out of the trap and getting and being yeah. able to go to the police or whoever. Here it's like no like mystery novel worth their salt would have spent a full chapter of Nancy explaining why the bad guy is the bad guy. Yeah. It just that just it, it overstayed its welcome towards the end. Yeah. Uh that sequence at the end where you sort of talk with all the people and uh Yeah. That that, that sort of a, bit of the post game, that was fine. Yeah, I was yeah, I was I was fine I was fine with that. It was a bit odd considering Nancy Drew's always on the letter thing. But I'm never against the like, oh like where is everybody now? Where is our, like seeing everybody like that was a way to give it more character to everybody after the fact and like see the consequences of everything that's gone down and seeing how people have grown rather than just writing off, oh, this is what these people did afterwards. That was something that bothered me with old Nancy Drew games. It's like, oh, we're just told what people are doing rather than like actually interacting with them. But in in this case, it's like that end sequence was almost made a bit worse because you just sat there for 20 minutes watching Nancy explain everything about the case. To, yeah. And then, but not just explaining everything about the case, but also like black, basically blackmailing the judge into listening to her. Yeah, it was... Oh boy. And again, I, I think there could have been some really interesting nuance things done with this based on the idea of like um th- there was that whole thing about uh 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 you know you're you're judging this person who might not even have done it uh mm-hmm. just based on her past and the thing the to it would have been an interesting quandary to put forth like yeah, but you have to understand we have to we have to actually arrest someone for this. We can't just like do nothing. Yeah. And so far she's this one girl has been very suspicious about all of this and well, while well, we don't just, while we don't want that? to jump to conclusions, she kind of hasn't well, given us a choice here. Yeah, well, that's but that's the other thing too. It's like it's not just that she's suspicious; it's that she's the only person without an alibi. And by reason of logic, it's like she's the only person who could do it from the police's eyes. So why wouldn't they just go ahead with the arrest? It's like you can have a you can have a moral debate if that's right or not. But like Maya's like put herself in this position by not giving her alibi. 
and like it's not it's not as black and white as the game wants to make it. If the police don't have anybody else and only one person, like and it's someone has had to have done it, then it's the one person that they don't like. This is the only suspicious person that they could arrest. Right, but I'm... they make the <clears throat> but then they make the judge all like. Like all like self-aggrandizing, moralizing. Oh, it has to be like he's like, oh, it has to be her. Like not even like any bit of reason. It's like, look, she's the only person who has no alibi. She's yeah, the, and, and I system. mean, and I mean, in a town with so many people, like in a town like Salem, there are plenty of people who wouldn't have an alibi. That's another yeah. thing that just I want to. Oh point. yeah, that's the thing I just want to point out. Well, it, it's just something that the game kind of gets wrong, and I get why the game kind of gets it wrong because. It needs to have a limited cast, but well, also, th- oh, and it was a bit of dialogue that struck me as odd. Uh, that lawyer, when she said, "Like, yeah, there's really no one in this town. It's a tiny little town, not a ton of people. You kind of know everyone. Like, everyone in this town is the same." And I, I said to myself, eh, "Not really. Salem's a pretty big place. There are a lot of people living in Salem. There are." There are like fifteen thousand people living in Salem. Like, I, I maybe I would have bought this if they actually like dated the game back in like like a hundred years ago, maybe. Oh like, yeah, I may have this bought, was like a nineteen thirties like, type deal. That would yes, I would totally buy that. And like, but and I'd also would have bought some of like the care like how some of the characters behaved as well. Um, because some like like the judge acts like this like kind of does act like this like prick who doesn't know better, but. I feel like everybody feels like it doesn't feel realistic in sense of like the information and technology we have today and under and it seems like it's just like a judge that wants to just get it off his docket really or he has a well he has a more like he has a grudge against my or whatever I don't remember the specific details but yeah and I mean he does he and he does have a reason for having that grudge it, it's like about his son I think yeah but uh yeah, it just doesn't really work. Yeah, but I think the worst thing about this game and is the setting of Salem. It feels more like a set piece rather than an actual place you're going to explore. Which, given like Nancy Drew's history, like Nancy Drew has always been this game series where it's like you feel like you're actually exploring these real places. The only time, like there are some times, like I would where it feels doesn't feel like a real place. Like I can look at something like the. Uh, the one that was like in Egypt or whatever, like the ones that are like uh, more. I don't, I don't know how oh, to put it, but here's I've got it. Here's the thing. Here's something I just realized. Mm-hmm. There is not a single location in this game that you don't get to through dialogue. Mm. There, like, there is not a single place in this game. That isn't unlocked to you through talking to someone. You never is... proactively go to these places. Like, there's the second floor of the museum. You gotta talk to Tegan in order to get up there. Uh, in order to get into the evidence room in the uh, uh, in the courthouse, y- you have to talk to the judge and get his permission to go in there. Which, I'm, I'm fine with the evidence room bit where, like... Yeah, that's like I, I yeah, but it, it was the fact that it was like the whole game was like like there wasn't even like one real secret secret passage like at the end of the game there's like oh you're going through secret passages but it's the game takes you there it's not like you've like covered like some secret area through your own like deductive skills or like your own snooping or whatever. One of the great things about classic Nancy Drew is like how scary it can be because you're going into these uncharted territories or like these dark tunnels or hidden passages and you don't know what's around any turn. Well, and it's, well, that's, it's, I mean, it kind of is that in, in Midnight in Salem, but the thing with, but, Min, the thing with other Nancy Drew games is a lot of those secret passages, you find yourself just. Yeah, no, but no, but that's, but that's, that's my point. Like in Midnight in Salem, like there feels like there's no sense of dread because you because you're at the conclusion of the game. You're at like, the game's just telling you to go through here and figure out your way through here rather than you stumbling upon this secret cavern where you have no idea what the meaning is for it. Yeah, no. I But again, I'll I'll admit this game does have its good good bits. There are some things I do like in it. Um not the jump scares. The jump scares were awful. <laughs> Ugh, god. 
I mean, Though I will say they a, were I, they were they're funny bad. I mean, there have been a couple in Nancy Drew before, like yeah. um uh the one that readily comes to mind is Shadow at Water's Edge. Yeah. But I feel like Shadow's I'm not against the idea of jump, jump scares and like these first person like exploration games, like but I was talking more about like when you actually see the ghosts and like the models are just like spazzing out because spazzing out is scary. Yeah. And I mean, that's the thing. You could have some, you know, you could have done some really cool atmospheric horror with, um, mm-hmm. uh, with like a Puritan ghost. That'd be cool. Yeah. No, absolutely. That's well, man. That's partially why Shadow, like the stuff at Shadow Shadow's Edge, worked, is because it was just atmosphere. Like the ghost was just there. Where here, it was try- making like just a big deal of, of or, like this ghost. Uh, ghost of Thorn Hall also was similar. Yeah, like the ghost would just show up, and it wouldn't really do anything except for like I think once it it like burst into flames or something. Mm-hmm. But other than that, it just sort of would advance on you slowly and then fade away. It was super freaking yeah. creepy. Yeah, because well, cause you you never, like, it always kept the tension high and the atmosphere was always high. And you never really knew what to expect. Where I think the big, like, going back to Midnight in Salem, it's like a lot of the time, like, at some point you knew that the game was trying to be cinematic and, and at the, running at all gears at all times. So you were never, like, you were never unprepared for the scary stuff. Yeah. I mean, that is admittedly, uh, that's me judging it on the merits of a Nancy Drew game that is supposed to be atmospherically scary. Because not all Nancy Drew games are atmospherically scary. Like, well, yeah, no. uh, Like, uh, for instance, um, to to give a comparison with older Nancy Drew games, uh, Mm -hmm. Secret of Shadow Ranch versus Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake. Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake was supposed to be atmospherically scary. Like, even though the ghost dogs, like, never showed up again after, like, that first intro, uh, Mm -hmm. you always felt a little on edge going through the woods at night. It was just creepy. Whereas, uh, something like, uh, whereas, uh, Secret of Shadow Ranch, uh, it was never really super scary because, as mentioned, the ghost only really ever showed up in these pre-done cutscenes at night. Uh, and they were never really super scary. But I don't think they were supposed to be scary. They weren't trying to scare you. They right. were right. I think the the ghosts in Shadow Ranch were more there to build this mystery of unknow. Like you don't know yeah. what's going on. But yeah. they weren't like, oh, I'm I'm here to scare you, or oh, uh, this, it's not that this ghost is right. going to come and get you. Yeah, Secret of Shadow Ranch wasn't supposed to be atmospherically scary, which is what I think Midnight at Salem is going for. Yeah, and that's like. I can and I can think like one of the things I like about the Nintendo games is they always try to do different things with the games. They don't make us like an atmospherically scary game every time. They don't make a bright, poppy, fun game every time. Like sometimes you're going to some foreign country solving like a murder. Um, some other games you're you're exploring this like old spooky house. Other games you're um taking part of some dumb survival survive survivor game show. Oh my god, <laughs> dumb. Okay, so, that was so dumb. Okay. Midnight in Salem or Shattered Medallion? Which one's better? Ooh, that's a rough one. Uh... Because cause I, cause I'm torn because I feel like they have both fundamentally different problems between the games. Yeah. Like, like Midnight in Salem actually has like a decent, like a decent story and a decent idea behind the story. It just fails in ex- execution. But... Which is... Which, I, that's why I'm going to say, I think I like Midnight Salem more than Shattered Medallion. Because I think yeah. Shattered Medallion, uh, I think its problems are on a fundamental level. Yeah. Like, some of those, like, some of those, like, minigame puzzles that makes you play are, like, out of this world bad. Yep. Also, like, also going back, I do feel like Midnight, like, well, Shattered Medallion still has a bit of that old Nancy Drew charm because it's not holding your hand through the whole game. Right. Right. Where like I would still I would still tell someone to go play Shattered Medallion before playing Midnight in Salem because there there's a charm to the old style of Nancy Drew. Like when I say old, I mean like because there's there's clearly two different generations of Nancy Drew games before Midnight in Salem. You have like you yeah. have your classic, and then you have like your like because you have full UI changes like well 
of an updates between the two generations, clear different focuses between the games. Yeah, I'd like, say the I'd say the ch- big changes came somewhere from like fifteen to twenty. Yeah, is where the the <clears throat> the shift was. To the same extent, I don't think like well, I do think the second generation games had like some of the worst games in the series. I, I do think they, they still had some phenomenal stuff in there. Yeah, there were and some then, really good games in there. Like, even though I know some people don't really like it, and it has, for me, one of the most infuriating puzzles in the franchise, I loved Haunting of Castle Malloy. Yeah, I, oh, I, I, quite, I remember like liking that one quite a bit, too. Like, another, another, another weird one that is... Like, I, I, still, I quite like the Deadly Device, just because I felt like its setting was so strong. Yeah, it it had an interesting setting. Yeah, and all the Tesla stuff was really cool and interesting. Anyways, I think we should be um it's getting a bit late. We should be um closing things out. Yeah. So, um uh, do you have um any final thoughts on uh, Nancy Drew Midnight Salem or like just Nancy Drew series in general? <sighs> yeah, I'm definitely worried about the series. I I don't know if they're ever going to make another one, honestly. Yeah. I would not be surprised if they don't. I'm I'm personally kind of conflicted because I on one hand they they did a huge engine change between the two like they're working on their own in-house engine for the original games and they've hopped over to Unity clearly did not have enough time to learn the system um to get like to make a, the game that they wanted to make yeah but um I would I would hope that her interactive would understand that this game wasn't going to be a critical success considering the big the big shift yeah and now that they're familiar with the system they can go and make the next game cuz Nancy Drew's always had flops let's let's be real like ever like ever since the generational slip sh- shift there's been flops in between like every other game or so partially because they were doing half year releases yeah but i i would hope that this game is more of an investment and they got they put the game out just to get the money yeah, and that we'll and that, see. yeah, we'll see. Because I, there were times playing Midnight in Salem that I did feel a bit of that old Nancy Drew um, charm. Yeah, granted, exactly. The, granted, granted, a lot of that was thanks to the soundtrack still being a Nancy Drew soundtrack. Oh like, yeah, although God damn it, they didn't have the theme song. Yeah, how, that how that was you? unacceptable. That was unacceptable. How like, dare I, you? I I am I I have half a mind to like. Like to form like a lawsuit just because of that. Because how how can you sell a Nancy Drew game by Hero Interactive without the Nancy Drew like theme? Like it, it is iconic, and you have no re- you had no reason not to use it. Like I would have been okay with like even like an updated version because they changed it between like the first and second generations. It was the same melody and same tune, but they upgraded like they they made an updated version of it. I still prefer the older version because it has this like, this has this haunted scary theme. But the newer the newer one has like this still has a sense of adventure and it's more of an adventure series like going on at that point. Yeah. Like it fits the games that came come out at that point. But to not have any sort of rendition, that was that's inexcusable. That was a crime. Like, yeah. Uh zero out of ten, no Nancy Drew theme song. That's that's yeah. why um, Shattered Medallion yeah. is better because it has the theme song. Yep. <laughs> God. Yeah, no. Uh I mean, I definitely would still suggest to people like play some of the nancy drew games just well, play some of the older ones well and i think i think that's the thing if her interactive sees that people are going back and buying and playing the older ones like that's i actually think that's why they released all the games on steam recently too because i think they anticipated that that i say it wasn't going to be a critical or monetary success but given the game's large history and pedigree having all those games put up on steam without having to really remake them at all Gives them another source of revenue, and if we can go tell people to play, go and play all of those amazing games, then maybe that'll inspire them. Yeah, or maybe, maybe not Shattered them... Medallion. Maybe, maybe not Shattered def- Medallion. Shattered Medallion should never be your first game. Period. Not even Nancy Drew game. Just don't play Nancy. Just, just avoid Shattered, Shattered Medallion. Medallion. That's honestly a game you could probably skip in general. Like, just oof. Uh, unless if you're an absolute sadist, like. Like or a masochist or whatever. Like Shattered Medallion is, I I would play Midnight in Salem again. I wouldn't play Shattered Medall- Medallion again. Yep. Uh, that's Nancy Drew. Um, I 
I do hope we see a revival of the series to some yeah. extent outside <laughs> of it. I, I hope I hope they learn from their mistakes. I do find it a bit upsetting to see like a, as many positive like see the game get positive reviews, and to some extent with with things I don't particularly care about the games, like as I said, like Nancy Drew has never been a game series about like this narrative or your like they've always had a story, but you were never the center of the story, and yeah, I. Like it was you. It was you uncovering the story that was already there. Yeah, and like you causing things to happen rather than things like you being intertwined with everything going on. I mean, for the most part, there were exceptions yeah. to that, of course. Yeah. Oh, of like, course, there's exceptions like, like Alibi and Ashes, like the but Silent I, I, Spy. Yeah, but I wouldn't classify those as like either even some of my favorite Nancy Drew games. Yeah. Like, like, like the for me my. For iconic Nancy Drew game for me is you have some old building that you're staying in and you go around and you're like uncovering a mystery related to it, finding a bunch of secret passages and whatnot. Yeah. And and there's something spooky going on. For yeah. me, that's what makes a great Nancy Drew game is this. It's that sense of like, I love that's like that atmosphere. I love snooping. I love uncovering secret passages and. Like the sense of distrust and that like anybody could come and stab you in the back at any moment. Yeah. Like the games can be intense at times. Like you do, you never know what's going to happen. And right. I, I, I miss, I, I miss like the crazy, like death trap sort of situations you'd used to get into. Like, I know we never got around to playing that, but Scarlet Hands finale is kind of messed up. Oh yeah, it's it's yeah that little self-contained little escape room thing with the yeah with the where you're like you just sealed in a box. Yeah, that that like I've I've only played that game when I was a kid, and I still remember that. Like yeah. Well, now that we've had this discussion, once we get once uh, we head out, I might just pick up one of those old Nancy Drew games. Uh, I might too. We'll see. Uh, I've. I've got a lot of the physical copies. I don't know how well they run, though. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, some of those old physical copies don't run as well on newer PCs. Yeah. Curse you, technology! Yep. Well, uh, I'll yeah. let you get off then. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Great this talking has been... to you, man. Yeah, thanks. Got... And this has been Bros in a Landfill. Uh, uh, Temzik, do you want to... Do you have, like, anywhere, like, people can find you? Uh, uh if they want to follow not your really. antics? Nah, not really. Uh... If if something comes up and I I show up again, I'll, I'll be sure to drop that. Oh yeah. But, uh, oh yeah. Reme- you're definitely you're definitely welcome whenever. But yeah, uh, definitely I'll talk to you later and uh, <laughs> dare to play.